Hey guys, it is the Blonde Broker here at ECC in Brussels. We're at the Genzio Media House and I'm joined by none other than the founder of Koi Al. How are you today? Hey, doing great. We just finished our hackathon. Yeah. 14 teams. How did the hackathon go? Uh, it started a week ago and yesterday we spent 18 hours building. So have you guys announced the winner yet? We did. Yeah. It was a social protocol. They're aggregating all of the Web3 socials and putting them into one place on oh, Moti, wow. our native social network. Which is I know amazing. Moti. Moti's a big name in the space. Moti's growing fast. In the yeah. deep in space. 10,000 nodes and around 10,000 users in like a month and a half. Is this their first hackathon as well? Their first hackathon as a sponsor, yeah. Okay. They're killing it. And then is this your first ECC or have, has Koi been here before? I've been at pretty much every ECC. Every ECC. So this is my first ECC. I okay. love ECC. You've ECC is always a good time. The European crowd are very, it's a good mix of academic and social. And so people are really having good ideas. And there's a little bit of revolutionary spirit here that's not found elsewhere. Yeah, what did you think about the side events this week? Uh, they've been pretty good. I've been at all of my own though. I've been just running around like crazy. We had 14 teams build projects this week. So it's been very busy. You have an event going on this week. Do you want to touch on the one that you have today? Yeah, well, it's the same event that we've been having all week. It's the Koi Hackathon series. Uh, last time that we did one of these, it was a two-day event, and it wasn't enough time for people to build like complete right. projects. Uh, the difference this time is we started on Sunday before the event, and then we went right through the conference all the way till now. Um, and the only time that we weren't doing this was when we were all taking breaks to go and visit specific other events that were participating with Koi. Um, and that meant that over the course of the week, we had people go from zero to a full product which we've never seen before, but they actually got it done. There's even a non-technical team that got an entire product built. Is there a way that we can go like watch any of the projects back or what they were able yes. to Yes, so we have the entire thing recorded. There'll be a series of all the speakers and a bunch of the different Perfect. people have done like little, uh, we're calling them pirate radio snippets where they did little interviews. And we also have a tweet thread going out later today, actually, it's probably come out before this comes out. That's gonna have all of the GitHub links, which is amazing. So we actually okay. have all of the code from all these projects that people can go and actually use. Um, so we've created like, you know, 14 new templates for the ecosystem that's gonna push things forward yeah, That's a lot. amazing. Yeah. Okay, so we can definitely check that out. Um, is Okay, so I do wanna go back in time because I think this might be some of our people's first time meeting you. What was your history and your background before you got into crypto, before founding Koi? Let's start there and then we can talk about the company. So I spent a long time trying to figure out how to make the world a better place with technology. Both my parents are in medicine, so they spent a lot of time where they were treating one person at a time. And I watched that my whole childhood. And it seemed like to me that if you could use technology right, you could help a lot of people at once. So I started going down this path. I looked at decentralized social media, decentralized search, like things where people as a community could work together. I was really interested in LimeWire, actually, which I think was just because I couldn't afford iTunes when I was 14. And so, yeah, a lot of people fell into this path. And that led me down this path of like, can we collaborate in a way that leads to these things being better? Um, my first project was a mesh Wi-Fi grid. So we got everybody to buy these routers and we connected them all together. Uh, if this sounds familiar, it wasn't Helium. Uh, it was a different project, but it was before crypto came out. So before like tokens got popular, that project we scaled up for a while. And then I got very interested in tokenization after that to try to figure out how to like solve that full cycle. I ended up starting a crypto school in Chicago and working with one of the co-founders of Ethereum. Uh, we spent like a while developing a lot of this tech and trying to get people to be engaged with this. And what we noticed was it's just really hard. Like yeah. It was just, it was at that point, there was not even a docs portal. Like it was all decentralized. So you had to go on Reddit and argue with people to find out how to do things. And that was, yeah, it was like a lot of trolls just messing with you as well. Yeah. And you have to filter through almost any social forum regardless. So I could imagine, okay, I didn't know you did that in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it was cool. a full on crypto really school. We educated like 3,000, 5,000 people. Okay. So not only can you literally mesh an entire house or you can wire a whole house which is oh, awesome a whole city a whole city you can do a whole okay oh, we did a, we did a city in canada okay, yeah, so yeah. a decorative background the passion for koi though it, it came through all the struggles over the last couple of years of like how do we do this how do we make it efficient how do we make it reachable for everyone else i want what is koi so koi came out of the beginning of covid i'd been running this crypto school i had a consulting firm i was building a lot of these different projects and there was this weird thing that started happening on the internet where there were like multiple different echo chambers that disagreed with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, this happened at the Trump election too, the first time in like 2016. And there was like these very disparate groups that completely disagreed on things. So we had the idea that we'd create knowledge on the internet. And we started looking at how to do that. And one of the things we thought was like, if we index all the content and put it onto a decentralized network, then we can start to have our disagreements be a little bit more, a little bit more of a discussion and less of a point 
right? Like it's yeah. like it's not like you're winning a game. You don't try to score points. You just want to be able to actually know that somebody disagrees with you and why, and be able to explore that and like learn from it. So that's why it's called the Knowledgeable Open Infinite Internet. And we spent a long time doing this. Knowledgeable Open Infinite Internet is K O I I, which is coy, by the way. Um, so we spent a long time on this, and then what we figured out is people all have computers, and you can make money with computers by scanning the internet the way Google does. And so we started with that, and then we started to build out all the containerization and like kind of the full stack for hosting and building applications that we have now. But now we're at 86,000 nodes, which is I think 10,000 since the last time we talked. Yeah, which is huge. Okay, so you guys are growing very quickly. If someone listening said, I want to get involved with Koi, I want to download a node too, how would they go about that? I think download a node is a bad terminology to use because most people don't uh, use that. Most people think that that. that's scary. Like if you say download the node, like if you say go try this new node, people get scared. What we're actually saying here is just put this app on your computer. And then with this app, yep. you can go and actually help people participate in decentralization. Okay. I like that a lot better. And, and you just click these little buttons. It's like the play button on iTunes. We just, we took iTunes and we made it run decentralized apps. It's the same thing. You just have this little play button and you click play and then you start supporting these projects. And I know what it looks like. So I think it's very aesthetically pleasing. It is actually very simple to get the app. I will say that not, I won't say the download word. Um, what is your X handle? What is the website for someone else to go do it? Uh, we just go to Koi, K-O-I-I dot network. Okay, perfect. Easy peasy. Uh, or Koi Foundation on Twitter. And then there are also some incentives. Once you do have the node running that you can earn Koi, correct? Yeah. So the whole point of Koi is that you work with communities. So actually, as of this week, not only can you earn Koi, but you can earn all of these other Deepin tokens. And if people aren't familiar with Deepin, what this basically means is somebody out there wants to do something big and they need a lot of computers for it, or they need a lot of people and computers, more importantly. We had one project this week. This is one of my favorite ideas in the world. He's, the project is called TMA. TMA. Too many assholes. And this is the idea. He's a, this guy used to be a political lobbyist, and he says there's too many assholes in the world. And so we need to go and troll them. And so he's recruiting coin nodes to troll politicians as a DAO. So they're going to issue their own token. They'll do a crowdfunding campaign. You'll be able to run this app on your computer and it'll go grab some text from ChatGPT and help you troll the politicians you disagree with. And you choose which politician you want to troll. That's the best part. So it's totally decentralized. Anybody can participate. Everybody earns a DAO token for helping. But we end up like creating a groundswell of political pressure on Twitter. So it is on, it's on X. Okay. That well, was my and next everywhere question. else. Yeah. And everywhere else. Yeah. So like Reddit too. Yeah, anything that you can access as an individual, you can do with your coin node. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so we can all work together to make something happen, which is kind of the whole point. So I know this week you probably are working with a ton of companies. Do you have any other projects that you can share with us or some alpha that you're going to be partnering with in the future? Well, obviously, we've been really big on search and social for a while. The cool thing about that, though, is as you build these primitives, you end up building applications on top of the primitives. So if you have a search engine, then you can build a certain type of search engine, or you can build an LLM or like a ChatGPT type product. Those are all built on the same fundamental tech. Things like social also enable this. So with Modi, we actually had Modi co-sponsoring a bounty this week on the hackathon, and they offered a whole bunch of prize money. And that meant that every single project that came out this week also integrated Modi. And so now the ecosystem is starting to build on top of the layers of technology that we have. And what this means is every single product that came out this week has a social component. It's fun. Perfect. Which is wicked. And so now you press that play button on your computer. Not only do you get paid, but you also get the joy of knowing that something big is happening in the world. And if someone said, hey, I want to learn more about what you're doing with Modi or I have questions for you. You guys have a Discord, a big community in Discord, correct? Yeah, it's like 50,000 people in there. Yeah. Um, it's very active and in every language group around the world too. Um, we have people speaking, I think, eight languages in there and there's different channels so people can actually like get to know the people who are in their jurisdiction. The crazy thing about Koi, which people don't realize, is it's in 400 countries now. That's have, massive. Like this massive community that like I can't even actually read half of our Discord. But we have moderators from each community that have volunteered to actually kind of like manage it. And that means that all of these people around the world are putting their own spin on it. And so things like social and search end up getting localized, which is incredibly powerful. So rather than having a global internet headquartered in California, we now have a local internet using common protocols where everybody has a coin node. And we're getting very close to that being a reality. That's so cool. What do you guys have planned over the next year? 
this point, it's just about more developer activation. Okay. So we're going to be doing events like this pretty much every week. I'm going to be going to Paul uh, Limpert to film the Crypto Nights show, which is going to be interesting. So I'm actually going to be on a reality TV show that might nice. go on Netflix. We just signed the paperwork for that today, which is crazy. I don't think I'm actually supposed to announce that, so we might have to cut this out. Yeah, it's a fun time. The fascinating thing, though, is over the next six months, we're hoping to onboard 10 projects a month, which means that by next year, there will be in the range of a thousand tokens on Koi. So a thousand tokens on Koi means each one of those founders starts a company, crowdfunds it through Koi, and then they go and get a bunch of people in their area who believe in that idea to go and back them. And every time that one of those companies launches, they're going to onboard more node operators and grow the ecosystem further. Uh, which is actually what the t-shirt's about. So we started giving these out this week. The idea behind this is you need a community to build something big. Correct. But even if you have the best ideas and the best technology and the best software, you still need a bunch of people to actually provide you with hardware to run that software on top of. And that's what Koi is really good at is this crowdsourcing side. Once you get to the point where you can crowdsource it, though, you still need to be able to pay somebody to maintain it. Yeah. And so we built this crowdfunding platform so that Koi can crowdfund from our community because we thought, you know, we got 86,000 node operators that keep asking to buy tokens from us. So we actually went and built this whole KYC platform, uh, which is like a launch pad. But it's really more like you buy the tokens so you can stake them because that's what a network looks like, looks like like this, right? That's the economics. You buy the tokens so that you can stake them. And then from there, you can actually become an investor and you can support them. And so what we want to do for all these projects that are coming out is give them their first thousand true fans from day one. I love that. You build an idea with the community. You crowdsource the hardware from the community to get a test net. And then you actually go and raise money directly from the same community. And then they can actually help you build that brand and actually carry it out to the world. And we think we can do this for like 100 projects, which so is going to be nuts. Koi is like really for the people. I know you guys have a slogan. We've been saying a few different versions of this. I think the one that's been really sticking lately is a little less Wall Street, a little more All Street. Which like we're it. trying to put the cypher, like the punk back in cypherpunk, you know? Okay, that's sick. The main thing about this is the cypherpunk era. So cypherpunk at the beginning was a bunch of people who wanted to be more private and have more security online. And back then the internet was full of scammers, right? And you couldn't tell if somebody sending you an email was your friend or somebody else because there was no way to like, you know, you couldn't just send them a text and be like, is this your email? Yeah. And so there's all these scams all the time and everybody was phishing each other and it was like kind of rough. And so back then people started talking about cryptography as a tool. And that's around when cryptography became legal for average people. Cryptography used to be illegal. In like 2005, you weren't allowed to have private messages that were encrypted. It just wasn't cool. And so cryptocurrency actually emerged very quickly after cryptography became legal. And people don't think about this, but at the origins of cryptography and public cryptography, it was a punk thing. It was like, hmm. we want to be the revolution. Yeah. And so we're trying to bring that back. And it's not actually about doing it as a brand or as a business. It's about doing it with every single individual who wants to be part of that and then amplifying their voice. That's cool. We know that the term getting a node, putting that on our computer can sometimes be a little bit scary, but we want to really express how easy it is to do. Can you touch on that? Okay. So when you say getting a node, most people picture a command line for six hours that maybe works and then costs you a lot of money and right. you have to buy some fancy hardware. What we're talking about here is like an app and it's like not a hard app either. It's a simple thing that just comes with your computer and makes it really easy. Our goal is that the coin node is part of your phone or part of your laptop. Okay. Something that you just put on there because it pays for your internet connection and it pays for the cost of actually running the node. And maybe it actually pays off the laptop itself. Would love that. Right? That's, that's where we should be. We have a need for this kind of hardware in the world. With AI, there's now a shortage of a lot of the chips that we need. So everybody's got a phone in their pocket. They've got a computer at home. That could be the hosting infrastructure of the future. And the whole point of this, though, has been to make this so easy that anybody can do it effortlessly because a little bit of effort is often too much. And so at this point with Koi, all you need to do is click the download button and then three more buttons and your node's up and running. That's too easy. It takes less time than it takes you to walk to get a glass of water from wherever you're sitting. So how do we get more people to be doing this with us? So the mission here is, what we've realized at least, is it's not about money. At first we thought, we'll get everybody to do this, it'll be idealistic, and we'll spread this message of decentralizing the internet and people will like it. And that actually doesn't work because nobody cares about decentralizing the internet, right? And then we thought about, maybe we need to pay people. So we started talking to a lot of people and trying to convince them to come in because they're going to make money off this. And that works for some people. But then we figured out that there's all these people out there who have great ideas of mm -hmm. what they want to do with this community and with all these computers. And now we've just given them the microphone. And it's spectacular watching them tell the story. And they tell the story way better than I could ever tell the story. And that's, I think, where we get everybody's grandma, not just my grandma to run it. Yeah. Right. And like, you know, watching my grandma install it was great. And she did it on like version two when it was like 12 clicks. 
the latest version, we watched people do it at the hackathon this week and every single person that came in installed one. People off the street grabbed a t-shirt and installed one. And it's like, it's so easy to do that. Like even anybody who's like not computer savvy can click through it. And it's probably easier than using a Word document. There's no, there's no hidden buttons or something. You're not clicking through menus to try and do things. You just click the button it says play and there you go. It's done. And you just choose the projects you want to support. That's the key thing. How many projects do you say that you are working with right now? We had 10 and now we have 24 as of this week. Oh, wow. That's so we impressive. Just, the, the ecosystem just doubled in size in the last That's six impressive. days. That's impressive. What conferences are you going to be at next so people can look for you? That's a good question. We'll definitely be in Singapore for uh, Token 2049 and for Breakpoint. And I think we're going to be spending a lot of time in Asia this fall. There's DevCon in Bangkok. And yep. then there's going to be uh, another big activation for uh, India Blockchain Week in Bangalore. And that sounds like it's going to be a really exciting community. We have a whole bunch of our team that are from that part of the world. And we really want to get back out there. Okay. Well, we will see you there. Yeah. That's exciting. Should be fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.